Danny Blanco, my man, how you doing? I'm not doing very well. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm not doing very well. How are you doing? I, I, why? I wonder why. Don't worry about that. I know we have a special guest in the building, so we can get to introducing him while I sulk in the corner. Thank you. <laughs> Before we get to him, you can follow Denny Blanco on both IG and Twitter at Sir Denny Blanco on the bottom of the screen. My man CP, the franchise, the host and creator of Knicks Fan TV. CP, my man, how you doing? Listen, man, it's raining Nets fans' tears right now. I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm feeling great. Boy, thanks again for having me on. No problem. No problem, man. You can find him on Twitter at Knicks Fan TV. I know, but you, you also have your own personal account. There, yeah, right? CP the franchise. The CP franchise. The franchise. franchise. Yes, sir. So, for those who don't know, I I always crack on Denny Blanco for being the the, the Nets fan since the day KD and Kyrie fan. So he he he's not a diehard. He don't bleed black and white like how you bleed orange and blue for the yeah. Knicks. Yeah. Um, as a New Yorker, do you take any? You know, are are you happy when Brooklyn loses regular season playoffs, or are you more like, man, if my Knicks are not in it, I I still gotta support a New York team still in the playoffs? Nah, it's all orange and blue on this side. You know, wow. Katie and Kyrie have no love for the Knicks. I got no love for them. Anytime they lose, <laughs> it's win for me. I went to the last game at the Garden Knicks and Nets. You had the the Brooklyn Brigade. I was I was surrounded by them. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Brooklyn Brigade, all these bandwagon fans jumping out the woodworks with mm. all these Brooklyn chants and everything like that. Listen, man, Nets lost tonight. They're in trouble, and, and I'm having a great time. Hey, man, the, the, well, 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 you know, don't say that too loud because my man, an upper right hand corner is 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 in mourning. You know, down 0-2. Listen, man, I'm a big KD Kyrie fan. I'm not a Brooklyn Nets fan. I, I am a Knicks fan. So, um, I was I, I'm rooting for KD and Kyrie. That that just me. Mm. And I thought they had game one, a fucking great game in game one. Game two, I thought they had game two as well, up 17. And then the second half came, and it's like all downhill from there. It, it can come down to KD not playing well, Kyrie not playing well, Steve Nash coaching, getting out coach, Boston just being a better team. Denny Blanco, what in the world happened to the Brooklyn Nets in game two? Talk to me. Talk to me. You took my soul when you was just breaking that down just now. You just took my I'm soul. I'm just giving the facts. You just breaking it down like every sentence you was mentioned was like, cut them. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because when the Knicks lose or don't get a trade or don't, or don't get a, a free agent signing, you you break it down to me by second by second by second. Now it's my turn to tell you the facts. You know what? Let me be consistent. Go ahead. <laughs> Let me be consistent because when I go with the Knicks... <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I do, you know, surgically cut. So let me just take my time, right? Okay, no, no we, don't have, we, don't have, we don't have all night. You mentioned a couple of things. First and foremost, defense is going to win this this series, not offense. Mm -hmm. I told you the earlier, uh, previous game, I told you they, they can't go small. They have to go big. They, they're going to have to go big. Like, you, you, you starting Curry... And you, you bring in Patty Mills and Drogis, that's not going to help you defensively against mm -hmm. these long, long and tall guys on the Boston Celtics team. And then you got, right. then you have, um, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this Boston team with everyone scoring in double digits. <laughs> like, Seven out of eight. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone's like, we can score. We can just go ahead and run this offense and get and get some get some points. Mm. And that's the thing. I say run an offense. They run an actual offense where guys just get plug and play. I mean, what was, was Greg Williams seventeen? Yeah, seventeen. Three, three for three. Pretty three, much. Three for three from three point line from the three point mm -hmm. line. It, it, we're down o two. Yeah, Knicks fans are roll just rolling around laughing in their beds. <laughs> but the point is. We still haven't seen this team full strength. So, mm. I, I feel comfortable. Not very comfortable, but comfortable enough going into game three to, 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 to imagine a team with Ben Simmons playing. Mm -hmm. Imagine a bigger team. And I'd like to see the adjustments that Boston bring to the table against that team with Ben, Kyrie, and Kevin playing. Oh, and last and last and least, I don't know what the hell happened to Kyrie tonight. Mm. Ten points. 
Yeah. 10 points for Kyrie. 4 for 13. I mean, Kevin Durant gave you free throws. He 18 for 20 for free throw lines, so 27 points. He yeah. shot terribly, too. So they both were in straight jackets. So I, mm. at this point, hey, hey, buddy, wait for Ben. CP, talk to me. Game two, Brooklyn, Boston. What you Man. saw out there? I mean, well, first, I'll, I'll give both teams credit. I think this is the most intense series I've seen in quite some time. I just, you know, NBA's gotten soft in, a, in, in you know, for a yes. long time. And yes, playoffs are intense, but this this has been ratcheted up. And, and an old school fan of basketball, um, it, it's just a pleasure to watch. But I think my keys to this victory, number one, was the Boston defense, man. I mean, both teams turned the ball over 14 times. Boston was able to score 19 points off of those turnovers. Their defense on Kevin Durant, I haven't seen a team defend Katie. You're never going to stop Katie, but the attention, the scheme, and the intensity with which they are defending him, I've never seen it in, a, in quite some time. Mm. I mean, they are blitzing him on everything, forced six turnovers on Katie tonight. He just wasn't sharp. He wasn't focused, and, and they were in his head. And I think... Their whole defensive philosophy, it, it's turned up over the season. I mean, to see where this team has started, to see where they are now, they're embodying the coach's philosophy, and they're, they're, they're running behind their leaders. Um, smart playing defense, defensive player of the year. You got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown playing defense. They don't even have the Time Lord Robert Williams. You know, Al Horford is scrapping mm. out there. The whole team. So I think their defense has really been on display. That was the biggest difference in this game. Um, you talk about the balance out of the team, you know, Jason Tatum, I think he's been magnificent these first two series. I mean, he's only averaging four dimes in the regular season. He had 10 dimes tonight, eight uh, in game one. So he's been really good in just being a playmaker and making everybody else better. You know, they always wondered about the chemistry between him and Jalen Brown and mm -hmm. could Tatum make his teammates better. You've seen that tonight, only 19 points, but I think his impact on this game uh, can't be understated. So I think those are some of the things that uh, won boss in this game. And, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, the Nets adjust. They saying Ben Simmons is coming back in game four. You know, will it be too late by then? How does he get integrated within this lineup? You know, they could use an extra defense, especially on the wing. You don't want to see Drogic's guarding uh, Jason Tatum out there. So the Nets depth you know, ha has taken a hit. As you guys said, we have not yet seen them at full strength since they've gotten here in, in terms of Katie and Kyrie. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they, how they adjust going into game three for Boston. This game was major. You know, you don't want to go back to Brooklyn, uh, giving the Nets any type of confidence. You want to send them back to Brooklyn with some question marks and some things to consider. This wasn't a great uh, game plan by Steve Nash, especially on the offensive side in crunch time, uh, the Brooklyn Nets, you know, uh, stymied so is absolutely stuck in the mud offensively in, in key stretches in that fourth quarter. Uh, so, you know, they got to get back to the drawing board. So if I say CP, if you were a betting man right now for what you've been able to see, yeah, are you, are, are you putting bread on this? This is going to be a sweep. Brooklyn goes back to Boston down three, one, or they go back to Boston tied up at two. Which one are you leaning towards right now? Look, you, you you can never dis you can never discount two superstars like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Right. You, you can never ever 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 count them out. I don't care who they have on that team or how deep. I don't care if they got to go five deep in a 48, 48 minute game. You can't you can't discount that. They're going back home. They're going to be fresher. You figure game three, they'll get the benefit of the whistle. NBA will probably tilted to to their end, trying to you know give them a little bit of incentive to get back into the series. I think it can very easily go back to Boston. Uh, tied up. Listen, Boston's playing well. They did what they had to do. They got their two home victories. Um, mm -hmm. Not a dominant team by any stretch. Their defense is very ferocious. Don't get me wrong. But Katie and Kyrie, you know, this is when superstars come to play. Championship pedigree. They rise to that occasion. You know, and we've seen them when they're at their A game. Sometimes it don't matter. You know, you send double, triple teams. When Katie can rise over you and knock down those shots, he can, he can yeah. get that done. So I wouldn't count them out by any stretch. CP, CP talking that talk at the end, right? He's talking that talk at the end. He was, oh yeah, he was, listen, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Nets hater, but I'm a realistic basketball fan. You know, exactly. watching these guys for years, you know what they're and, capable of still. And I, that's why we rocks with you. That's why we rocks with you. I wanted to say something too, also to you mentioned coaching. I mentioned this mm. earlier. I mentioned this earlier to, to, uh, to Randy. Obviously, Yudoka, right? Yudoka's a disciple of Greg Popovich. And 
Greg Popovich, you know, and Nash watched. too, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, disciple, Greg Popovich, right? Disciple of Greg Popovich. Yeah, mm-hmm. listen, yeah. I've seen them. Um, I've seen Greg Popovich, you know, defend your your Shaqs, your Kobe's, your all these all these players, and you know, the, he used to pick and choose his spots when he would send double teams, and he wouldn't do it at the beginning of the series or the beginning of the game. He would late wait till later in the series, later in games to do these double teams. Your dog is like, forget that. We're gonna do that off rip. We're gonna double Kyrie. We're gonna double uh, Katie off rip. Just double them. Don't even worry about them getting into a rhythm. Don't worry about them getting into uh, uh, waiting until the third or fourth quarter. Let's double them off rip, and it's thrown them off. It's thrown them both off. They don't know what to do because they don't see that kind of defense often. You you may see that towards the later rounds, maybe, and then you 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 adjust to it. But to be in the first mm. round, first two games. And every time you you make a move, is two people on you. Not too many people can know what to do with that, yeah. even with one person. But two, just a point to make, sir, sirs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I would say real quick on that, you know, um, and, and I think that's been an excellent job by Udoka and Boston, just showing them that pressure. I mean, it, it's really been impacting them. On the flip side, I, I like how they kind of counter it using Bruce Brown, you know, in the middle of the court. Kind of breaking down the the double team, and then he he had twenty three points tonight. That was big for them. So he's mm-hmm. either scoring or he's dumping it over the top to uh to Claxton for the lob. So you know we'll, we'll see if, if uh you know how Boston attacks that in Game Three and how the Nets counter again because I like how they use uh, Bruce Brown in that way. So I'm pretty sure my TV was not lying to me. I think Philly won this game. So I think they're I up three, they're up three zip. Uh, last week. Preview show. Denny Bronco told me out of his mouth, I got Toronto in seven. And I said, you know what? If there was going to be any upset or somebody in trouble, I could see Philly could be in trouble. So now, like, I look kind of bad. Denny Blanco looks way worse. You said a sweep that came again, one dub right now. So, with, with, and hard and fouled out too. So, Brook is down 0-2. Toronto's down 0-3. Yo, what's what's, what's going on, man? You, you're giving out bad information right now, brother. What's going on? Listen, listen, listen. Toronto, I, I expected a lot more from Toronto. Don't get, don't get, me, don't get it twisted. I expected, but, you know, Embiid's a different beast. Mm. He, 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 I was looking at him, how, how he looked against Toronto, and there's only so much strategy you can do when it's like Zion playing against six-year-olds. Mm-hmm. It, that's that's how I look at MB moving around on the court against Toronto. They just right. mis- it's a mismatch of epic proportions. They have no they have no say. So, um, unfortunately, DraftKings mm-hmm. betting site. Sorry, guys. I think uh, I think Toronto's pulling this out. Pulling this. Uh, I mean, you know, Philly's pulling this broom out, baby. Toronto going. So let me ask you. This. I I, I, I want to go back to Nash now. I don't know unless they heard that we don't know about Blake Griffin on the bench. All just uh, is, is on the bench. I'm not saying you're getting LA Clipper, Blake Griffin. You ain't getting Portland Trailblazer or uh, uh, Lamarcus, but those are two big guys that you can play spot minutes to get a couple of rebounds, play some defense, give some height. It can't just be like you mentioned, uh, Denny. It can't be all the guards out there against a, 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 a Celtic team. That has all the hype. I don't know why Nash is not playing those two guys. We know Ben Simmons is out, so you're missing three guys. Um, how much of what you've been seeing in, in games one and two with CPU go first falls on Steve Nash? Yeah, I, I think a lot of Nets fans are pointing fingers at Steve Nash, man. I, I think mm-hmm. a lot of places are, are pointing, and a lot of fans are pointing fingers at Steve Nash. Um, as you said, they haven't really utilized Blake Griffin a lot this year at all. You know, you had a guy who, uh, a guy in the Kessler Edwards, who I was, you know, fairly impressed with how he played the Knicks. You know, scrappy, athletic, length, can, mm-hmm. shoot, can knock down the open three. You know, he, he's a guy I was kind of surprised that didn't get any burn um, tonight. You know, you did see Drogic's turn, turn back the clock a little bit with 18 points, but they need more help. And, and like I said, they, they could use another wing defender out there to help chase down uh, Tatum and Brown. You know, he did have Bruce Brown on, on Jalen Brown today. But like I said, in key moments of that fourth quarter, you had Drogic's guard and Jason Tatum. 
I mean, mm. <laughs> you know, that's, right, just not, that. that's just not going to work, especially when he's been in, in his bag. And then, like I said, offensively, it just seemed like, you know, it was just Katie, Kyrie, your turn, my turn, just taking bad shots. And mm. he had no flow, especially later on in the game. Nobody breaking down the defense, creating open looks for the role players. Uh, it was just all bad there. So I think right. he has a lot of adjusting to do in game three. Is it is it true is it true that uh Yudoka was on the um on the bench last last year on the Nets bench? That's what I said. He was with either San Antonio or f- was he, he wasn't on the Nets bench? I thought he was in Brooklyn. Um, I thought he was in Brooklyn. We'll confirm that while 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 I'm talking. We'll confirm yeah, that. Double, he, double he check that been, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the Nets bench. San Antonio, Philly, Nets. He was on the Nets bench last year. So your man Nash getting out coached by the guy who was on his yeah. bench last year in yeah. his first year coaching. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. You don't get halftime. You don't get halftime. All right, guys. This is what they're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's gonna go left. He's gonna go right. Kyrie's gonna come off the mm-hmm. curl. All right, Marcus, go here. Jason, go here. Al, go here. Hey, you got the Everyone playbook. Else, do what you yep. do. <laughs> he got the playbook. He got the playbook. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> going, even going into the strategy, you mentioned Edwards. That I told Randy, I said you start Edwards. Kyrie Edwards put Kevin Durant at the three. Mm-hmm. Drummond, you go, you go big, and then you mm-hmm. say, okay, let's see what your adjustment is to this because you guys want to. Um, Slow down on us offensively. We got to now punish you down low and see if that strategy works. Yeah. That's their only hope at this point. Yeah. And then Ben. And see, with Boston, they're getting shooting from guards, forwards, and the bigs. That's what I'm saying with Blake and, and LaMarcus. They can play five, ten minutes, but those are two guys that could potentially hit three-point shots from the outside that you got to stretch, stretch the defense out. Right now, it's all about Curry and Drogic and Kyrie. Marcus Smart going to clamp on, 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 on all those guys. You gotta you gotta make other guys play deal. Al Horford making threes. Yeah. So Lamarcus can't do that. Blake can't do that shit. It should make no sense. Well, Blake and Lamarcus aren't aren't the shooter that Al is. One hundred percent. Don't get me wrong. But they could make a couple threes out there, bro. They they. Lamarcus can only goes so far. Lamarcus can only go so far. Blake, he's been trying to shoot threes. That's great, but it, it's different <laughs> types. Of, it's different types of things. Besides the three pointing, three point shots for them, it's the offensive rebounds. It's the scrappy points. It's the big bodies that. Yeah. Well, so when the ball goes up, Jason Tatum is not Jason Tatum is not pushing Drogic all the way under the rim so he can just jump over him and rebound. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen with a big. There's more fighting involved. So that's what I'm looking for in the next couple of, next couple of games. Some more right. fight. Exactly. Um, I think BK wins game three. I think we'll see. Uh, again, I, I you can't count out KD. You can't count yeah. out Kyrie. It's home in Brooklyn. Game three. They probably get the whistle. You know how you know how shit goes. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you with the playbook, with the playbook. Yeah, I mean, if I've they go down 0-3, it, it's, it's a different conversation. You go down two one. Now it's like, all right, now I don't see KD having three bad games in a right, row. Right, right, right. There's no okay, way. Okay, okay. I'm going to wait. Stay, stop, stop. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, here we go. Boys and girls, it's in the game. Ball is live. Randy, CP the franchise. You've never seen this type of defense on Kevin Durant, yet you're saying in the same sentence, you don't see him shooting this bat in the next game. Man, I am scared because Kevin doesn't look comfortable to me. Yeah. And I don't see this type of defense slowing down as the games progress. Okay, so so now what does BK have to do to make Tatum uncomfortable, to make Jalen Brown uncomfortable? How do you make Boston uncomfortable? CP, maybe. I I, I know, but CP. Man. <laughs> Bring get get Ben Simmons. <laughs> get Ben Simmons back in there. You, you know, know, could it, you imagine this whole series is now boiled down to getting Ben Simmons back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It uh, should be. I'm, it I'm it, it should be. I mean, he's been mm-hmm. ducking. The, listen, you can't. You can only duck NBA team pressure for so long. Whether it's mm-hmm. from Philly or the Nets, it's called expectations. 
And and let's be clear, expectations and and what we, what Nets fans expect. Let me explain to you what I expect if we get a Ben Simmons back. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ten points. Ten rebounds. Ten assists. <laughs> Triple double right out the gate. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Eight, eight, and eight. I hear you. Defend their best big and wing. That's it. Everything else will fall into place. Everything okay, else. coach. Ben Simmons comes back. You got him on Tatum or Brown? <laughs> we going to Tatum, baby. Go right to Tatum. Right, Damn. Right, right to the right. wolves, huh? Right, right to the wolves. Go right. right to, no, no, no. We got to eat. We got to eat right now. Go right to Tatum. <laughs> I mean, right to Tatum. In, in this game, I mean, he still shot five for 16 from the field, right? I don't think that defense was all the way that bad on him, you know, for the full 48 minutes. But what I thought Tatum did a good job of, he, he took what the defense gave him, and he made plays. He finished with 10 dimes. I mean, he was right. finding three-point shooters in the corners. He was finding uh, Jalen Brown on the elbow. He was finding his guys. He was making the right play. So, you know, it, it wasn't all that bad, but I think Tatum was just better tonight. Mm. I, I thought he was just better. You put Ben on Tatum and shoots that five for 16. Is he still getting those 10 assists? Maybe not. You put him on Smart. You put him on Brown. You think these guys are literally getting everything they want as they want it? No. This is the guy I saw LeBron James try to post him up. <laughs> <laughs> And LeBron looked back and was like, oh, like, oh you, you still there? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. My bad. Let me come out here. Right. <laughs> There's a different ball game with Ben. So st- strategy-wise, I hope they – he uh, the, Steve Nash, I hope he puts um, Ben in. And obviously, you mentioned Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown, I'm, a, I'm, I'm imagining everywhere Bruce Brown is, Ben was. Mm-hmm. Ben is. Ben's going to be. That's where I'm imagining Bruce Brown. I'm like, okay, if Ben's there, what's Ben going to do? Right. Because right now this game, this just game, I mean, what? He just gave us 20, Bruce Brown. He just gave the previous game. 23. Previous game, he was gone. He was yeah. gone. He, he wasn't even here. So, you know, no pressure on Ben. Very little expectation. You have <laughs> no you laugh, pressure. You laugh when I say that, right? You laugh when no I say pressure. that. Sounds good, right? It sounds good. It sounds good when I say it, right? Low pressure, low expectation. Kyrie, Kevin, uh, Kyrie, Kevin Durant. I mean, hey, we expect you to average forty. Mm-hmm. We expect them to average forty. We don't expect right. Ben to average forty. We expect Ben mm-hmm. to do what he's brought, been brought here to do: rebound, assist, and defend. So I assume that all of us have Brooklyn winning Game Three. I don't. I would, yeah, I would you put, don't. I'll put him down for three. I'll put him down for three. Come on, Danny. I'll put him down for three. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Even with the playbook, <laughs> even with you don't could sit there like this. All right. Even with all that, and the, the I'm talking about Brooklyn's home crowd. Hopefully, mm-hmm. that's enough to push push us through. Hopefully, right. Uh, before we move on, what other series in the first round you are being a fan of right now, CP? What, what What's in, intriguing your mind right now? Man, so the Timberwolves have been my league pass team. Like, that's the team. When I turn on league pass, I've, I've been watching them. So that Timberwolves, Memphis, I like John Morant. That's one of my favorite plays in the league. That series right. tied up 1-1. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to Soda, I think that series is going to be tough, man. Uh, I think it's going to be tough. I, I like the fact that Minnesota has depth. They have shot creators. Uh, Cat can go off when he wants to. I think a lot of it is up here with him, man. Got into some some terrible fouls yesterday, bad foul trouble again yesterday. Uh, but when he wants to turn it on, he can. You got Anthony Edwards who was shining in game one. Uh, D'Lo is capable of getting it done. Then you got Malik Beasley off the bench. Uh, but with Memphis, you know, jaw has been their engine, and, and he rebounded in game two, uh, mm-hmm. got him the necessary dub, and, and so that's going back to Soda Tide. I'm very interested in that series. And the other series I'm very intrigued by now is this Phoenix and New Orleans series. No Devin Booker now for games three and four. <sighs> Yo, this this thing could get very interesting, man. Draft I kings, draft kings. <laughs> Yo, I, I love the fact that Brandon Ingram is on the playoff stage. He's emerging. Uh, yeah, CJ McCollum, that acquisition was major for the Pelicans. Both those guys finished with nine dimes yesterday. They're a very balanced team. They have offense. They have three-point shooting. 
between Ingram and McCollum. They have uh, mm-hmm. Trey Murphy. You know, they got a scrapping Alvarado, local kid. He's all over the court, right? Then you could get boards. They got Valanciunas on the boards, Larry Nance. They have athleticism. So that, that Pelican team with no Zion is still very interesting, man, and very balanced. And mm-hmm. well coached. Give credit to Willie Green as well. CCP, I'm a little disappointed. You want to know why? Because this, this way we, we, we bring in some, some, some Nick stuff now. All right. I'm surprised you when you say the Maverick series with the Jazz, and you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going? With, do, do you have any idea where I'm going with this? Oh no, where? I know. We, well, th- I mean, there's two avenues. Are you are you going? Are you going for the big fish, or are you, are you going for right? We we, we we scouting. Oh yeah, oh we yeah. Scouting. Heavy scouting. Heavy scouting. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Danny Blanco, we scouting Jalen Brunson, and of course. See, see, th- don't start that shit, bro. Don't, don't, don't start laughing. This is just some really serious shit right now. Jalen Brunson and, of course, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is the big fish. That's right. He has, what, three, four years left in a contract, CP? At least. Probably about three. So, um, it could be about four, actually. Dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Jalen Brunson is a free agent. So we what we are watching that series. It's a good series, tie one one. Luca might come back, so that that can be some 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 dope shit. So CP, are you in the camp of man? If I'm scouting, if I'm the Knicks, I'm looking more Jalen Brunson's way, yeah, or dare I say Donovan Mitchell's way? But I know if I'm trying to reach over there, it's a heftier price to pay to get Donovan Mitchell next year as opposed to Jalen Brunson. You know, I, I think the, all the rumors that's coming out of Utah this year was just very interesting and strange at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. the rumors of dissension in the locker room and Mitchell and Gobert not getting along. You remember, take it back from when COVID first started and, right. you know, when Gobert, quote unquote, kind of spread it around the locker room that, that Donovan Mitchell, they kind of fell out from there. So that whole yeah. dynamic and the rumors coming out of there have been strange. Uh, we, we've seen Utah have a lot of letdown games this season, a lot of blown leads late in the fourth quarter. So this, this, this series is interesting and a lot of speculation that, you know, this Utah team, I, I feel like, or, or a lot of people feel like they've kind of reached their peak or hit their yeah. ceiling in terms of how far they can really go with this unit. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. They do have Danny Ainge, a part of their organization. We know he's a guy that's never afraid to shake things up and, and roll the dice. So we'll see what happens, but obviously that that's going to be a, a huge haul for the Knicks. I think that um, you know, with four years, he has four years left on this contract. There's no leverage there, so that's going to be the hardest thing. Even if he did want to trade out of there, you know, the Jazz have no obligation to you know give him what he wants or you know, right. And and I don't think he he hasn't really been there long enough to be that guy where you say like, okay, he's given us everything he has. Let, let's mm-hmm. let's. You know, throw him a bone and, and do him a favor. They're not gonna do him no favor. So mm-hmm. I think Brunson is the more realistic target. You know, Worldwide West Julius Allen Houston were at the game one in Dallas. Um, mm-hmm. Brunson, part of the CAA family, father played for the Knicks. Um, father was the first client of Leon Rose for CAA. So the t- the family ties are there. Will Mark Cuban be willing to let him go? <laughs> we'll see, man. He just dropped Probably not. one points a game too. We'll see, but th- I think he's a more realistic target. Then you may have 40 in game two. Right, right. Danny Blanco will talk to me. Spider Mitchell, Big Fish, or you simmer it down to get Jalen Brunson at a lower cost. Simmer down. That's like a that's like a full flame <laughs> down to a, <laughs> a number one on the stove, big bro. Let me uh, let me put you on the game. Go ahead. Donovan's going to pull a, J- a James Harden and demand a, a, a trade? Mm, I, I don't know. That's one thing I have to think about when I think about this particular scenario. He's going to have to pull a James Harden. So mm-hmm. that's one uh, one thing I'm thinking about. And then you mentioned Mr. Brunson. Yeah, I loved him as a, loved his father as a player at Temple. Loved him. Uh, love him. I love his son as a player. However... But, <laughs> oh, talk to me. You guys are the next. It's it, you mentioned CP the franchise. <laughs> oh, the, the, the franchise, no franchise, art. franchise, the fans, fans. Fran- the there's franchise. no art. Franchise, there is no art. Franchise. There is no art. That's clarity too for everyone that's listening. That's clarity. Listen, the the relationship shouldn't matter. 
Uh, Brunson is, is 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 small. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm keeping it objective for you Knicks fans. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, you're saying if it's not Brunson and it's not Donovan, who is it? I feel you. That's a fair. That's a fair. That's a fair question. And and let me answer that very slowly. Very slowly. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Just build what you have. Which is fine. Just build with what fine. you have. Do a Miami. Just mm-hmm. build from what you have. To take two or three years. Build with Obi. Build with RJ. Build with uh quickly. Build with those young guns and see what you get. Give them mm-hmm. some minutes and then go from there. As, a, as opposed to, because that's the last question I have in terms of this topic. You're going after Brunson. What are you giving up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from the Knicks? No, you you just sign him, right? CP, you did the free agent. Nah, that, see, the Knicks are capped out, so it would have to be a sign and trade. He is a free agent, but it would have to be a sign and trade because Ooh, unless okay. the Knicks are able to shed salary before that, but I did most pro, most likely it would have to be a sign and trade. Sign and trade. Who you giving up, Randy? Who Obi? You giving up Obi? You giving up Obi, right? You giving up Obi? Oh, okay. You giving up RJ? Oh, the, you giving up RJ? The, Can, the Canadian, Mr. Canadian? You giving up Mr. Mr. Canada? You giving up him? Oh, R- RJ, RJ. I think CP would would agree. RJ would only be in the convo if Donovan Mitchell is on his. Mitchell is it Mitchell? That's it. That's it. All yeah. right. Not for no Brunson. Not for nobody else. Okay, so so just be clear. Just be clear. And you, I, you're I've not in CP. So just to be clear, you agree that if this is a a, a one off. RJ for Donovan, that's a green light. Yeah, you have Press to. It. Yeah, you have to do it. You have Press to. It. It. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. But if it's not Donovan and it's Brunson, nah, I mean, it's got to be a smaller you? piece. Maybe it's a Mitch. You know, Dallas. Does, maybe Dallas wants some size. Maybe it's a, a combination of Mitch and another young guy. Maybe a pick or you know something along those lines. Then you can you still got to pay him. You're talking about a shark too. You're talking about Mark Cuban, a shark. He's not gonna allow you, he's not gonna allow you to be he's not gonna allow to be fleeced. He's not gonna be fleeced. Okay. So if he's gonna give up Brunson Brunson, one of I mean, for me, I think he's top in the league in terms of coming off the bench. He's one of those guys, he's right there in the top of the league, is the top league in terms of coming off the bench and providing you something. But I just you have to he has to be on a team where when I look at Van Fleet. Van Fleet and Toronto works because they're the same size. I look at that and I'm like, that works because look what's around him. Mm-hmm. Balanced, we're very well balanced. Well balanced. Right. So he, he, if they try to post, it's not going to work. He comes to the Knicks, it has to be a, a surrounding team where they're not going to allow him to be posted like that. So just a concern. Mm-hmm. Just a concern. I mean, they could put a Randall in that deal too. Ooh. They could. <sighs> I mean, if they want Randall. If if they want Randall, but <laughs> if if I'm wrong, correct me. What is what are Dallas's power forwards? Hey, uh, Powell. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, they don't really have a traditional center. No, they got so, rid of KP. So yeah, yeah. they got rid of KP. That's what I'm saying so. Randall um, could fill that void. They're good. They're good with the guards. Yeah. Even if they give it to Brunson, they, they still got Dinwiddie and Luca. Yeah, they go with I'm saying Philly Smith, Tim Hardaway Jr. They got this Hardaway guy. coming back. Yeah, oh, it's is suspect. Where we are suspect, aside from quickly, is the point guard situation. Yeah, so it kind of goes hand in hand. Am I right, CP? Yeah, what one hundred percent. Um, you know, I, I was I'm with Denny in that. I, I've been clamoring for for IQ to get the starting point guard job since they since the whole Kemba thing got fumbled. Yeah, I'm saying there's nothing to lose. Now's the time to to evaluate him and see what we have. Mm. Rather than riding with Alec Burks for you know the rest of the season, I like Alec Burks. You know, I like what he brings to the team. I think he could be a bucket, but I think he was severely misused. You know, you you use him as a point guard in an absolute emergency when you have no other options. You know what I'm right. saying? You had quickly there who you were trying to develop from the summer league. You know, Nick's contingent was in Vegas trying to develop him as, as a point guard. So why not give him an extended look? And you see how he played. I mean, they still used him, you know, as a six man, and he still finished quite a few games this season, but I thought they should have, they should have gave him a look. Brunson is small, no doubt about it. Um, defensively is, is where the question lies for me, uh, because as Danny said, this next team, 
they're still struggling to find balance in their starting lineup. You know, we just don't have a a a, a, a roster that's complementary. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, you know what I think one of the biggest things that we're missing from this lineup is is a true wing defender, somebody that's versatile, somebody that can guard threes, somebody that can guard fours. You know, uh, I think we have a Cam Reddish on that team. I think that's a role where he should be filling, maybe finishing more games next year. I don't think they're necessarily going to put Fournier on the bench or finishing more games so that we have that versatility. You know, you have a guy like that on the team, then you can maybe roll the dice on a Brunson because, Mm -hmm. you know, you can maybe throw a a, a versatile wing like that, a Macau Bridges, uh, um, a a, a Batum, you know, a guy that can guard ones through fours and really give you that that length and athleticism. We just don't have that. So he's right. You know, bringing in a Brunson with this team would be a little bit of a question mark. But offensively, make no mistake, man, this is a guy who finished shooting 68% at the rim in the 92nd percentile among point guards. Uh, 50% from the mid-range, very efficient off of his drives. You mm-hmm. see him going at Gobert in, in this series, you know, blowing past the, the Utah perimeter plays. So he's small, but he, he he can get it done. He's crafty around the rim, man. You know, defensively, it, we'll see what happens. You see, this, don't, go ahead, this is what I do. I'm not vouching for Brunson. I'm just saying, what if what are the 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 the, the peaks and everything for it to to try to to just to do our due diligence in, in trying to get him? Yeah. Do I want Donovan? Do I prefer Donovan Mitchell? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, do I prefer quickly to to start? I think that needs to happen because we haven't seen it. Yeah, and yeah. Not give him the opportunity. I I want him, RJ at, at starting. I would love Obi to start one day, but they they, they got to get rid of Randall for that to happen. Um. You know, we we were on it two months ago. <clears throat> we said, "Would you trade before Ben Simmons got to, uh, dealt to, to Brooklyn? Would you trade for Ben Simmons?" I said, "Sure." Would you trade for Zion? I said, "Sure." Why not? Because Zion is twenty something years old. He's gonna get healthy. You told me no. Others told me yeah. So it's like anybody who's out there. I'm like, you know what? We could try to get him, but I gotta be, I gotta be realistic too. The Knicks can't get every free agent possible. But at some point, we we are going to have to get somebody here that's going to be the 1A on the roster. And right now, we don't have a 1A at the moment. Can RJ be that, that, that guy at some point? Sure. Is he the 1A now? No. Randall is the he's, – he's playing the 1A part, but he's not a 1A player for this New York, this New York Knicks team. At some point, we got to get a 1A here. You <laughs> At one point, yeah. I listen. I, I don't even have enough time to go off on the the, the disgraceful things that have then been don't. Then don't. Uh, you're right. That's fair. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's, that's 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 fair. That's fair. I, I've been screaming at Randy every other game. Of course. Uh, the Knicks. I was screaming about quickly starting. Screaming about Grimes. Screaming about benching Evan Fournier. Screaming that Evan <laughs> can't True. play defense. True. I, I was screaming that. And I want to I want to make sure the record is on the wall. Mm-hmm. I was screaming that twenty games in the you, first right? half, you did? the first quarter of the season. I said, "All right, I've seen enough. I've seen enough of Evan." I said, "I said." <laughs> I, I, I even told Randy. I said, "Listen, he called me a Kemba hater. He called but me a Kemba are. hater. He called me a Kemba hater." I said, "Yo, bro, I love Kemba. He's from the Bronx. Rice all day. I feel you." <laughs> but defensively, from Charlotte to Boston, I said, I don't see anything that's going to change defensively. So I hope his offense offsets his defense, which yeah, it did. Right. So that blew up. So there's just things I'm just like, you know what? It, 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 there's going to be some work to, be, to do. Maybe some, like I said, development of Cam Reddish, development of Obi, development of RJ, maybe get quickly in and uh, go from there. But if you you, you want to do what Miami's doing, that's why I keep pointing to them because they seem to have the formula of developing their players, uh, keeping a core, and running running from there. So well, who Who is the 1A in Miami? It's Jimmy. You could say Jimmy Butler. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, but no, RJ. Listen, yeah, you give RJ the keys. Whether whether I don't. I mean, obviously, I don't know if Randall's going to be here. Randall's going to be back the next year. But I mean, you give RJ the keys, and then you build from you build from there. I mean, you mm-hmm. you have a good core. You have Obi, 
RJ, and then yeah. you have Cam, and then you have quickly. You, you have a young Jericho, Jericho Sims. You have a young Quentin Grimes. You have young core guys that uh, play play their positions too. You have to understand too, like Grimes is a it, Grimes plays defense. Obi Toppin plays defense. RJ, these guys aren't, and they're long and they're athletic. You guys have a future ahead of you if you don't blow it up. You know, for for a Nets fan, this guy's very sharp on the on the Nets, man. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's very sharp. Well, this guy does his homework, man. He talks as, he watches the Knicks quite thoroughly. He does. As, as you said earlier, um, you want to be objective when it comes to the basketball <laughs> game. Uh, you want to be clear on what you see. No doubt. No doubt. While you present to the fans. No the question. You don't, no you question. Don't wanna, you try to be. You don't want to be biased. I feel you. Everyone loves <laughs> right. every, Everyone loves their teams, etc. So yes. Um, I'm looking now at the Knicks and talking to them just like you've been talking about my Knicks. So, damn, yeah, damn. Damn. <laughs> so before I let CP go, I, I do want to spend some time on um, trying to figure out how this whole Knicks fan TV came about. Um, yeah, put us on. So I know you've been doing it for quite some time on Twitter, on YouTube. You got a major following. I, I, you know, I peek in time and time again. <laughs> Uh, see you on SNY with my guy Ian Bagley doing his show and everything. So I think there is a story that needs to be told about this. So um, how what was the genesis of Knicks Fan TV and how in the world did you get it to where it is right now? Yeah, so the, the genesis was, you know, I was just um, dissatisfied with the coverage of the team. And uh, I mean, and rightfully so. Looks, they they've been the laughing stock of the league for the better part of twenty years, right? But <laughs> I just felt like whether it was from the mainstream, the ESPNs, the sports radios, which I grew up on, or even the local, you know, team, you know, coverage on, on MSG, I just didn't feel like they were doing a great job, and I didn't feel like they were uh, really reaching the fan and connecting to the fan. They were more so pushing out their narratives, their agendas, but not really. Uh, capturing the pulse of the fan base and, and mm-hmm. fans are the lifeblood of sports. We are the investors in the product, right? And whether it's the merch, the tickets, the, the the TV set, look at, look at all the TV deals going up and up and up in all sports is because fans are tuning in. Fans are invested. Uh, they are fanatics. They're the diehards, but I just didn't feel like the coverage of the team was, was uh, I thought, I thought it lacked quality and it lacked depth. And so I just, um, you know, I, I really wasn't heavy on YouTube for a while, but as I started really looking through, I saw how how much, you know, people were gravitating towards YouTube style content, cutting the cords and going to more streaming style of uh, of content. And then I saw that um, the Premier League, they had fan channels that were very, very in-depth and, and, uh, and very passionate. And I just said, you know, we're from New York, like nobody can do it like us. And like exactly. coming coming from the sports radio generation and just listening to all those callers calling in Mike and the Mad Dog and Stephen A. Show, Max Kellman, all that passion. I wanted to recreate that, but just for the digital age, you know, for that YouTube generation. And so the first episode was more of a fan on the street type of content. I went out to MSG uh, during the 2017 draft and I just started interviewing fans. This is when the rumors were coming about that Phil was trying to trade Porzingis. And then we mm-hmm. tried to figure out who we was going to get. And then we came out with Frank and everybody was just all disappointed. So I, I took all that from the day <laughs> and just threw it up on the channel. And, and it did OK. But but the end game was always going to be a post game style show where the fans could call in like how, you know, I, I came up on on sports radio. And, right. You know, just having that on demand content. So things really um, evolved from there. You know, we, we've had a, a number of great guests. As you mentioned, Ian Begley, um, he's been a, a big guest on our show. Alan Hahn comes on our show every year for a season preview. You know, that show does, you know, oh, well over 100,000 views on YouTube. It's, it's mm-hmm. big for fans. Um, mm-hmm. Our player interviews have have really come on strong, you know, during the pandemic, which was which was big, especially from a content standpoint. No basketball for 10 months. Crazy. Um, we were able to get through. With the player interviews, you know, we had Sheed on, uh, Xavier McDaniel, we had Charlie Ward, we had um, Raymond Felton, you know, Jamal Crawford, you name it. You know, all the all, all the former players came on and we, we just went, we, we kind of shifted from post-game to storytelling, you know, bringing back the memories from, from those days. And 
um, yeah, the, the momentum has just been crazy. And, and from there, I got to shout out the Rhyme Animal, Chuck D, uh, because he's been, a, you know, the biggest champion uh, of the wave and the movement and really just been, you know, just trying to uh, put us out there. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, the story is told formally in a documentary that we created. It's called uh, Fi- uh, Fantastic Voyage. It's on the Knicks Fan TV YouTube channel. If you guys check it out, it's it'll go. We go more in depth on, you know, how we started and and how, you know, that wave kind of uh, transformed into other content creators that cover the Knicks. You know, I feel like whether when it comes to Knicks content creators, there's no other um, fan base in the league that has independent podcasts and bloggers at the rate that we do. And I feel right. like you know, a lot of that was was from what, you know, we kind of spawned and, and it's been a great thing. So you cover every single game, every game. after the game, right? Every game. Don't, don't so understand. what what is that preparation like? Because now like you got to be home mm-hmm. or with a fucking laptop watching the game, yeah. the whole entire game. You can have nine games on over here, but you're watching the Knicks solely, but, you know, to okay. yourself. And you're doing the notes and doing this, doing that. Like, what is that preparation yeah. like for those who, who, who don't know? Yeah, so it starts before the game. So I'm doing research on, on the team that we're playing, looking mm. at the trends, looking at the stats, looking at our own stats and trends, how, you know, players are playing, seeing how uh, the teams are ranking, and see how where they stack up, where our advantages could be. Um, watching the whole game. And then kind of going back to those notes and seeing, you know, drawing those conclusions, see what makes sense, see what didn't make sense. And then then I got to prep for my show because uh, it's a one man production. I don't I don't have a producer. It's not in studio. It's all live stream. It's all directed, produced by me. And then on top of that, I got to talk as well. So it's Mm -hmm. a lot of preparation on that. And as you know, you know, getting your live streams together, of course, live streaming. So it's getting the live streams together getting my guests or whoever whoever the co-hosts or the panelists are going to be for that night, uh, setting up the switchboard and, and connecting with the fans for whoever's going to call in. And we'll have fans call in from everywhere, all around the country, all around the world that, that will call in and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and just want to get tapped in. You know, I think that the biggest um, value of the platform to the fans have been, uh, especially the out-of-towners. You know, we have people from from Arkansas or London or or Vietnam and and they're out there doing what they do. But, you know, they don't have they can't go to their next door neighbor and talk Knicks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like in New York, you could be walking down the city. I might not know Denny, but I might hear him talking Knicks on the corner and we might we, we might stop and talk for an hour. And I don't yeah. know. Man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's how it is out here. But we take that for granted. You know, you have people all around the world who don't have that connection they don't have that community that they could lean on um to talk about their team talk about the team that they love and and a bad team at that right but they're still loyal based on whatever it is you know whether it's the you know family ties or or historic moments right so they look at our channel as that source of that Mm -hmm. community and and like i said it's, it's been growing exponentially ever since so before i let danny chime in i i i'm assuming it must it must be a good feeling where you know, you, you, you're doing a post game and you got diehard Knicks fans that are like, you know what? I love Wiley. I love Alan Hahn. I love their post game. But you know what? I ain't watching them tonight. I'm watching, <laughs> watching CP instead because it's going to be you, you're going to get a real, true New York authentic kind of feeling where Knicks win, Knicks lose. They do a bad trade, a, a great trade, great whatever. You're gonna you're gonna give them raw, authentic feelings. So how how does it feel for people to be on one side saying I don't want to watch MSG, I want to watch CP and the Knicks fan TV instead? Yeah, it, it feels great, and I, I feel like you know, and and most of the time we'll come on kind of after them or or once they've gotten deep into their post game, mm-hmm. and so um, people know that you, you know the timing of, of when to find us. I feel like you know there's a lane for everybody, right? You know those right. guys, I respect what they do. I feel like they do cover the team well, especially, you know, Alan, I have a lot of respect for what he does. But for us, um, it's the authenticity that appeals to the fans. I think it's the authenticity that appeals to people. Why, you know, look at reality TV and where that's come, you know, from and, and you know, where it is now. And why people are so into it because it's real. Mm. It's everyday, you know, human beings and, you know, whatever, you know, those those things are a bit more scripted. But you get what I'm right. saying. It's it, it's more, you know, real to life. and. For us, I think this is what fans respect. It's the people who they, they want to hear from the people who are like them, the diehards, 
And, you know, they want to know, how do you feel about what just happened? How do you feel about this play? How do you feel about this trade? You know, do you feel the way I feel? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Fans want that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they connect more um, with niche platforms like mine rather than the mainstream that's just going hot take after hot take. Who's the goat? Who's this? Who's the top 10? Who's, you know what I'm saying? Like that's good for entertainment. Yeah. But, but fans really want that real. And, and I think that's why, you know, platforms like mine appeal. Nice. Denny. I want to thank you for building a community. Appreciate it. I want to mm -hmm. thank you for building a community where uh, folks like Randy can go and really just uh it's, it's like a hornet's nest and vent, you know. and vent. <laughs> you you say again randy and what and vent my displeasure of the mix yeah, every this, single this time movie. they play yeah it's like you know dr <laughs> phil of Knicks fans you come over <laughs> yeah, especially this just, season especially this season come over yeah. and just have a, a you know community conversation about where things are and where things should go. I think that's mm -hmm. very important. I have my next my next community as well that I speak to and I cry <laughs> on their shoulder as well. I do. I do. I, I, and that's you the thing. You have to go there right after this. Exactly. No, 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 I'm going to sleep after this. Exactly. I, I can't. My brain, I can't. I, I, I'm going to sleep it off. I'm going to sleep it off. Uh, uh, but that's the thing about these, these, you know, you building these uh, platforms and, and giving opportunity for, you know, um, uh, us, the, you know, the fans, franchise the, the gives the opportunity for the fans to, uh, get a, you know, platform to speak to you, speak and, and share their honest, raw, uh, opinions. And, and that's important. So when, yeah, when Randy was asking about, you know, the LeBron trade and the Kevin Durant trade and the Kyrie trade and the Zion trade, <sighs> yeah, I, I tried to hey, tell them. Dreamers, we're dreamers, man. Yeah. I tried to tell them each time that's not gonna work, and I didn't have a community to come and, and, and piggyback off of him. Uh, uh, you know, piggyback off that. Now we do. We have a community. Next fan TV, baby. We have. A yeah, community. but but you know what, man? You know what you did? You sat back and said, you know what? I don't have a team. Oh, Katie went to Brooklyn. Oh, mm. shit, Kyrie too. Mm. And he was super invested. That Yo, the bad. following week, your man had a Brooklyn net hat on to the front. Brooklyn this Brigade. He's part of the Brooklyn we Brigade. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you never pump Brooklyn, New Jersey a day in your life. <laughs> you ain't got a Jason Kidd jersey, Kerry Kittles, <laughs> Kerry nobody. Kittles. You get Ron it. Williams, nobody. You can't vouch for nobody, bro. <laughs> Keep it hard. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just keep Damn. going. Keep it hard. Go ahead. Keep going. Lucius Harris. Lucius Harris. You don't got a Lucius <laughs> Harris jersey in the crib. Come on, man. It's it's just Carter, me, bro. RJ. Oh, my God. Listen, 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 Randy. Don't, don't, be, it's Sir Denny Blanco. Don't be disrespectful. We have a guest in the house. Don't pick me <laughs> as a guy that jumps ship to ship. Okay, listen. This is the truth. Okay. 10, 15 seconds. I, I love the Knicks. I ride the Knicks. I, I tease Randy all the time because that before I, I looked at the Nets and even desired to go for the Nets, be a Nets fan, I told Randy, I said, I can't support as a fan. I cannot support the Knicks and their management moves. The last time I loved the Knicks was the 54 and 18 team with Melo and Tyson Chandler and Jason Kidd in uh -huh. them. 2012, 13, yep. Yeah. I love that team. I love it. <laughs> and you know what they did? You know what they did? They just blew it up. And after yeah. that, I, and, and literally, I, I didn't think that team des needed to be blown up. I thought they, they they could run it back the next year. They were built for the run back, and they blew it up. And that upset me. And I told Randy, I said, Randy, that's it. That's it for the Knicks. I need a new team. Mm -hmm. Katie went to the Nets. Kyrie was on his way. I said, you know what? It's time. Bye, Knicks. I can't. No more. This that's guy. that's that's the that, that's what really happened. I am not just jumping <laughs> teams, okay, Randy. Okay, right? okay. For the record, if KD and Kyrie sign with the Knicks, then what? Are you rocking a Nick hat today? This is a good question. I'm glad you asked. It's a great question. It's a great no, question. No, great question. And I'm and glad be you real. Asked. No, I'm being a thousand percent real. My main issue with the Knicks was management. 
I wasn't going to jump ship. And that's the reason why Ky- Kyrie and Katie didn't go there in the first place, John Turkey. That's, that's not what I asked you. <laughs> if they sign with the no, Knicks. No, no, no. You're a fucking liar, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking liar, bro. Stop it. Stop it. Shut up. <laughs> um. I did forget to ask this question earlier. I don't know why I asked earlier, CP. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, if you're doing a Knicks fan TV show, you really have to be a real diehard Knicks fan. Mm-hmm. Bleed orange and blue. I know you out there, my boy, and Donahue, Ben Lyons, and a bunch of Nick diehard fans out there. Jerry Ferrara. Um, when did you become a Nick fan? What made you become a diehard Nick fan? Man, it's got to go back to like nine three, man, and, and right. just just catching like NBA on NBC, you know, all the classic matchups: Knicks, Bulls, Knicks, Pacers, and Knicks, Celtics. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just just catching all those matchups. Like growing up watching those games, I thought that was my that that was my team by default. Like there was no other. You know what I'm saying? Like they had yeah. New York on the front. The the captain was Jamaican. My family's Jamaican. Like this is my team. This is my mm-hmm. guy. You know right. what I'm saying, and and you just just the passion, the physicality, the toughness, the garden, the the electricity of Madison Square Garden. Like you felt that as a kid. Mm-hmm. When Riley left, I took that personal. I still mm-hmm. can't stand in Miami Heat to this day, bro. Mm-hmm. To this wow. day, I, I I you know Dwayne Wade was one of the greatest players that ever played a game. I, to this day, I could not enjoy Dwayne Wade's career. Because I hated the Miami Heat. Really? Wow. When LeBron went to the Heat, I was a LeBron fan. When he went to the Heat, it was over. Couldn't stand it. It was over. When he, when he left, <laughs> when he went back to Cleveland, oh, I was a I loved him. Ring. Go get that ring. You know what wow. I'm saying? Go win it for go go win it for the land. When he mm. was the Heat, can't stand it, bro. Wow. He, he he treated he treated LeBron like the Hulk. Uh, he he ate his vitamins and his minerals when he was the regular Hulk, and then when the Hulk turned heel, <laughs> he said, I, I, "Who I is this know. guy?" I was, I was that, that broke my heart. The whole decision broke my heart because Randy, I know, I know you guys remember the hype going into that because the New York Airway they swore he was coming to the Knicks. Mm-hmm. The yeah. hype was so real for LeBron. The hype was real. Knicks. I bought it hook, line, and sinker, bro. And I remember to this day waking up at like two in the morning. Mm-hmm. And the news broke. I think it was Alan Hahn that broke it on Twitter, the early days on Twitter. And the news broke. It was like, yeah, LeBron's going to Miami. I was like, Miami? Like, that don't even make sense. <laughs> because, because dead ass, uh, Chicago was a front runner. We were yep. a front runner and Cleveland. So the Miami thing, I was like, nah, nah. And then as the day got later, like it just was more confirmed, confirmed. Sports Center every hour. He's going to Miami. He's going to Miami. He's going to Miami. And then the decision. And then what? And then what made it worse? Uh, us Nick fans. Yo, he's doing the Boys and Girls Club in Connecticut. Come on, man. You know that what that means? Just, That's right that there. Just. He's a half hour away. <laughs> LeBron punked y'all big time, bro. Big time. I took LeBron, it personal. Oh man, LeBron punked y'all. Um, I took it personal, man. Real quick, rapid fire. Your favorite Nick, uh, Knicks of uh, of all time. Favorite Nick? Uh, Ewing, Melo. Ewing first, and, and then Melo. If you had to create a uh, starting five of your favorite Knicks, yeah. So Ewing, Melo. Who's the other other three guys? Mason. Okay. Houston Harper. Hmm. Team wise, your worst hated rival. I'm, I'm assuming Miami. Miami. Oh. <laughs> Miami. He said. He said why? He said why Miami? We ran. He said why Miami? No, the I said sun. wow. I said wow. Yeah. No, no, no. He, he asked earlier why Miami? Why LeBron choose the Sun? <laughs> <laughs> Miami, uh, man. It, uh, individual, your most hated player. Uh, the Knicks played against. <sighs> Reggie. Yeah, Reggie was a bad Reggie. 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 <laughs> Reggie. Yep. Yep. Oh, uh, what else I got? Damn. Biggest, okay. biggest villain. <laughs> biggest villain. That's what you know, I think so, that was a question on Twitter. Sorry, Red. Why you think no, it's nobody says me. Jordan? Nobody ever says Michael. Yo, you know, because Michael they say, they say Alonzo or Reggie Miller. It's, it's Reggie, man. It's no, because you know, Lonzo. I mean, see, Lonzo, we hated Lonzo because he always he was this. 
Yeah. He hated that. He hated that. Like, bro, yep. stop, stop, stop. He hated it for that. Right? He hated it for that. And then Jordan, Jordan was Jordan was classy. And yeah. Jordan only talked smack just for, you know, for a little bit. Reggie? Yep. You know what it was, man? It was, you know, it was just like, yo, MJ was the god, man. Like you you can't defeat that. Mm-hmm. You just you just watched and you were just like, what can we do against this right now? Listen, man, for the record, you know I became a Knicks fan in '99 when they got Sprewell. So mm-hmm. I'm in limbo from the Chicago Bull era. I was diehard, diehard Chicago Bull. My whole room was Jordan Bulls pimping mm-hmm. all over the place. And then then they dismantled it. I'm like, damn, I, I got to have a team. Because the Bulls they were coming out with, I'm like, no, no way. <laughs> so they made the trade for Sprewell with Golden State. I'm like, yo, I fuck with Sprewell and Golden State. This could be all right. Mm-hmm. And then at Houston, they had LJ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They still had Ewing. I'm like, you know what? I can, I can rock with the Knicks. And mm-hmm. lo and behold, that first year, they go to the finals against San Antonio. Then I'm like, all right, this is going to be great. Eastern Conference Finals the following yeah. year. It's perfect. It's every year, playoffs. The following year, they get bumped first round in Toronto. I'm like, all right, I'm still in the playoffs. Bro, from that point on. Never the same. 004, got swept by New Jersey. Oh, that, that was bad. That was bad. Jersey, Denny Blanco, not Brooklyn, New Jersey. All right, you were not a fan of them at that point. All right, Keith Van Horn, Drazen Petrovic, <clears throat> Drazen Petrovic. Listen, yeah, right. rest well, who else? Easy. Kenny A. Marbury. Hey man, hey Jason Williams. Hey man, listen. Don't knock me. Don't knock me because I know when to jump ship. You just say you jump ship from Chicago. And didn't ride wave until they got better with Derrick Rose and them, and then you know did their little wave. So yeah. you want to miss miss me with that, buddy? Okay, yeah. I can jump ship and 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 jump to the nets. And and once once Kyrie decides to be Ramadan Kyrie, mm. and it's a wrap, and he wants to he wants to get a trade to Utah, I'm jumping off the nets. <laughs> wow, I'm off the nets like <laughs> off. off. CP. And that could um, my last question before mm-hmm. I forget: Knicks Fan TV on on Twitter. You want IG as well? Uh, yeah, I'm Knicks Fan TV on everything: IG, Twitter, and YouTube, and uh, CP the Fan Chai. The Fan on, on Twitter. Damn. Yeah. So you've been yeah. a Knicks. Last question: You've been a Knicks fan since '93. Since '93, man. That's going on almost 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Which is your favorite Knicks team of all time? What year? He just I said, know, it. I, I know there ain't no championships, but it's got to be a favorite yeah. Nick team that you love. Die hard. Like, man, I love that fucking team, bro. 54 and 18. 54 and 18. Yeah, you know, yeah, Nick's tape, but I, I got to say 9 9 because it, they, their championship run came out of nowhere. And they were truly a Cinderella story. You know, just the way, even when Sprewell came, he struggled. He was off the bench, on the bench. He got injured. You didn't know how, you, you, you know, when, when he first came in and we losing Starks, I'm like, damn, we lost Starks. Is Sprewell mm-hmm. going to choke out Van Gundy? Like, what's going on? Like, you, right. know, you, you, you didn't know how volatile the whole situation was. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Sprewell, the, the fan base embraced him. Mm-hmm. You had the LJ four-point play against your rivals. You had the Houston play, HC beating the first seed in Miami against your rivals. The whole thing was was just a Cinderella story. Um, ended in heartbreak, of course, but I, I still like that nine nine team the best. You, you see, and there's no, another, just another Randy. Just every time he speaks, I just pull up another reason why. Like <laughs> y- another reason why I'm just like, how long has Eric Spolster been at Miami? Greg Popovich, <sighs> oh minute. Lord. Jeff a Van minute, Gundy. Yeah. Jeff Van Gundy was the one was a piece. Of the Knicks, that shit still should have still been there for a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. See, and he he can't do what he needs to do. Why? Because he's shackled. That's why. It, see, these are the things where I'm just like, I want to be a fan so bad, <laughs> and I'm just like, nah, I can't support that. I can't support that. I can't support that. You feel me? Right. <laughs> okay. Legit. Last question. Your favorite Nick moment you seen live at the Garden. <sighs> Man, favorite next moment I seen live at the garden. He said when somebody came in and dropped 50 on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Which had happened quite, quite a few times. I mean, honestly, it might not even be a Nick game. It might be the 9 8 All Star game. Honestly. Ooh. That's the best game I've ever seen at the garden. 
MJ so, won. So, so break that down. So break wow. that down. 98, 98 All Star game. Who's playing in that All Star game? This this is MJ's MVP. This is Kobe. This is KG. This is Tim Duncan. This is Penny Hardaway. Fire. Fire. As a kid, I was a, this was the first yeah. time at an All Star game, obviously, but in New York. Yeah. That was crazy. That was crazy. Ooh, you uh, went to you you ain't go to 2015 and 2016 in New York, the garden? No. I, I because I already knew the game was gonna be trash, and that was probably the worst game, worst all-star weekend, maybe of all time. It, it was terrible. Remember the, they, they had a polar vortex, it was crazy, freezing cold outside. Wow. You know, I went to the to the fab concert at Webster Halls outside freezing for man. I didn't mm-hmm. like that all star weekend, man. I didn't think we did well at all. We didn't nah. do well. <laughs> I was like, I was like four hours got in for now and well, then outside Webster Hall freezing, bro. Yeah, man. And mm. then the game, they just, you know, throwing alley oops from half court. Like it was just terrible, man. It was it was terrible. Um Yo, yeah, I, I, I gotta remember yeah. the best game I went to, man. It, it's hard to remember off the top of my head, man. I've been to a moment. moment. More a moment. You know what? You know what? Again, you know, the Heat gave me PTSD opening night, uh, 2012-13. That Knicks mm-hmm. tape season, we watched the Heat all regular season. Opening night, the Heat visiting the Knicks. Mm-hmm. We ran them out the building. That was a great feeling. That was the beginning of the season of that 54-win team. Made a statement on on that home opener. That was that was a good one. That you know what this past year's home opener was uh was good, man. We ran mm-hmm. twenty eight. We're cooking uh in, in double OT against the Celtics. That that was pretty good. That was pretty good as well, man. So um yeah, I, I would say those two of of recent years. Right, right. I think for me, I seen because I worked there at the time, still do. But I was remember the game. It was Utah at New York. Marbury D. Will was there mm-hmm. and D. Will made a shot and the Knicks are down and then Marbury takes like the last second layup. Dribbles. Yeah, yeah. The whole way down mm-hmm. makes the layup at the buzzer game over. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, bro, Steph took like three dribbles from one end of the court to the other and was like, yep. <sighs> hold this. Game over. He School did that. Down. He did that in high school in Lincoln. That was, oh, it was that easy. Was, that was a that was a regular Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> yo, I was there when David Lee hit that hit that 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 tap in against the Bobcats. Wow, yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And then me, stuff. my dumbass, goes back in the locker room area and it's, and I see Michael Jordan, and I'm like, okay, they just took an L. It's the only time I'm get to ask Michael for anything, autograph, picture, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And this is where be, before this is the old tunnel too, the old tunnel. Mm-hmm. And I see him come out the locker room. I say, hey, whatever. I say, hey, Mike, can I get it? Whatever I said. He said, not right now. He went right by me. And I was like, damn. <laughs> like, 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 I, I, I just spoke to Mike, though. I spoke, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, he acknowledged me. He, acknowledged. he told me no and kept it moving. <laughs> I was like, all right, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Randy got must. Randy got must. You, know? oh, you can't yeah. tell me nothing else. Uh, Jordan spoke to me, bro. Yeah, you good. So Jordan told yeah. me no. <laughs> nah, not right now, fam. I took an L. No. Yeah. To David Lee, I took an L. <laughs> classy. Just classy. Just classy. Just classy. Just classy. Oh, bro. man. Just Look, classy. CP, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I know it's running late. Again, Knicks Fan TV on IG, Twitter, YouTube. Go in and check it out. You know, support and uh the whole community that, that, uh, that you do. Um, how, well, I'm going to say how often, but mm-hmm. so right now it's dormant until next year. Or what do you guys do? With nah, it's all never all season for Knicks fan TV, man. We're there to do weekly shows just, just yes. to keep it fresh, tap in with the fans. We do, nice. you know, we, we have the fans kind of request the topics that we want to cover. Uh, we have the lottery coming up on May 17th. I'll be doing a live stream down from Miami. Actually, I'll be in Miami for that. Ooh, <laughs> live stream. You hear this guy? You hear and this then guy? do a Miami show. Down. Yeah, and then and then in between the lottery and the draft, that's when we have our draft coverage. So we'll have you know our experts, our, mm-hmm. our draft experts, come on and talk about some of the prospects that could be within the Knicks wheelhouse and the draft. And then once once the draft is over, fly out to Vegas for summer league, do our summer league content live on locations. We do a live streams from there. Nice. Um, and yeah, we just keep it rolling, man. We just keep it rolling. Danny, of all places, Miami. See, he's smart. Jimmy hates Miami. <laughs> No, no, he's smart. I mean, he he knows oh, what yeah. he's doing. Like, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not confusing. Um, Got to build a community and travel. 
That's it. Exactly. And, and you know we down there heavy, man. You know you got the snowbirds down down there heavy. So <laughs> I know we gonna mob out either way, man. Mm. Yeah. You can find Denny Blanco on IG and Twitter at Sir Denny Blanco. Find the podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube.com slash Cruise Control Podcast, also on Ball is Life. Dot com. Randy Cruz, Denny Blanco with CP the franchise. We out. Thank you. Ball is life. Yes, sir.